right? My mom was born in Old Crow in 1932, and when she was quite young, she found out they found out that she had TB, and they shipped her off to Edmonton, the Charles Cancer. Um, she and the nurses and doctors down there told everybody that you know most likely they won't have children, but if they did. Don't teach your children your language because it's a dying language and you don't want people laughing at the children you might have. And so my mom, when, when we were born, um, never spoke Gwich'in to us and um, hardly spoke it to other people when we were around. So we never learned Gwich'in when we were growing up. Stand that uh, I have been born in an igloo and uh, probably wasn't too far away from a seal hole. And uh, our, our way of life, it had been that way because there was hardly no uh, non natives in those days, and we didn't even know how to speak English. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was doing my trap line and trapping and stuff like that, when I'm cooking my dog pot and, uh, or waiting for, uh, for the evening, that I, I, I take on comics because uh, I didn't know how to read, I didn't know how to speak English, and then uh, uh, so I used to have uh, Jughead and Archie comics and all that good stuff. So you put in an application for Indian status. So if you can trace your history back eight generations to a true blue native Canadian, you can get status. So I see all around here, all my relatives, cousins, they're all status Indians. So what? What's going on here? We have white father, Métis mother, and you're an Indian? What's going on here? Oh, well, maybe I could do it too. So I filled it out. I did a little bit of research. I filled out that application. My grandmother, my juju, was born in Fort McPherson in 1901. Her brother used to be chief of Old Crow. Her father was Enoch Moses from Fort Yukon, Alaska. That's what, three generations to me? Am I an Indian? No. I'm only this much. But I'm proud of this much. So I applied. I want to be an Indian, because then I can change things.
they, they, they said we were cannibal, ancestors as cannibal. And so, so that is why how they would derive from, from uh, you know, cannibalism. They said our ancestors was practicing cannibalism, which was never true. <laughs> and, but the word Kalinagu is the name of the nation. That's, what, that's how our ancestors knew themselves. Kalinago people, the strong people, strong warrior. They did not know themselves as Caribs. When the, the Europeans came and they started colonizing the people and they, they wrote in their history book that our oh, ancestors are cannibal. That's how the word Carib and Caribbean became, you know, on the street on right now. But our ancestors know themselves as, as Kalinago people. A lot of people don't like, a lot of people in the territory, they don't like you to call them Caribs. Because the word Carib did not do good, it did not bring a good image. So when you would walk in the territory, even when you go to Roseau, the capital, and maybe a black person, you know, and somebody would call a, a Carib, Carib, Quaib, you know that sort of term, they would get angry. <laughs> 